Okay, welcome back. And now let's really talk about, do a little bit more of a deep dive here um, in scaling, how we deal with a lot of these problems and issues that we have. For instance, we talked about, you know, customers, we talked about fulfillment, um, these different things that create some of these issues within in our companies. Well, how do we deal with them? What's the process or a process to sit down with my staff if I have a staff or if it's just me what kind of a process can I go through you know problem you know think through that problem and then have the idea to solve it what is the how how do we do that I, I really like you'll see a, a picture graph of problem problem solving steps I like this uh, particular graph because it really takes you through the cycle of solving a problem okay um, for instance, in uh, the previous video we did, we talked about, say, poor customer service. Our customer service response is terrible. Okay, so what process do we take that through to fix it? Okay, we've defined a problem, right? Okay, the problem is, you know, our customer service is not robust enough at the, the fulfillment size we're currently at. So we define the problem analyze it okay that analytical process could be as simple as you going through the process yourself like I talked about okay analyze the problem all right and then identify solutions this is where we can mind map solutions okay we can we can start to mind map solutions to fix these problems okay so in other words if my customer support is just not very good Okay, what's the solution for that? Is it an employee problem? Is it, or is it a systems problem? Do you have some something like a Zendesk that is email only, that takes issues and concerns email only? Or do you have a call center that's outsourced to India or uh, you know some other place in the world that people have a very difficult time communicating with? I can speak from that from experience. Having issues communicating with customer service rep, reps from different countries, it, it's not their fault. They're doing their very best to uh, do the best job they can, but then there's that communication barrier and consumers get frustrated with it. So we identify some of these solutions going forward and then we pick the best avenue, okay? We choose a solution. Choose a solution, maybe that's, okay, I've gotten so much bad uh, negative review that my customer service is so terrible because I can't understand the customer service reps because they're from a different country. Well, if 98% of your current product that's sold is, is, is sold, purchased here in, say for example, in the United States, 98% of your customer base is in the United States and complete English speaking, you should know this stuff. Okay, um, your solution may be simple. You have to now shift your customer support call center to somewhere in the United States, period. And, and this goes back to having good customer service, listening to what your customer is saying, going through the process yourself. Okay, so we choose that solution. Plan of action is then put in place to fix that problem. In this specific case, it could be we now shift to a US-based customer support, not outside of the United States. So we implement that problem solved, okay? I love this model because it's very simple to plug any problem into and work your way through it with your staff and identify the problems that either your customers are telling you, your customer support might be telling you, your leadership in your company might be telling you whatever the case may be, you can use this for internal use for uh, whatever you want to use it for. You can use this model, okay? It's a really easy way to plug in problems, come up with solutions and fix them. Because if I have helped companies in the past that let problems just linger and linger and linger and linger and linger. And, and at the end of the day, they were basically driven out of business. And they were driven out of business because they didn't fix the most simplistic things 
that it would have would have taken to fix. It wouldn't have cost anything at all. They weren't in a scale. They were at a place where they were maintaining a awesome customer base. And all they had to do is treat that customer base really well at that point, And they could have scaled. Okay. But if you have, you know, these reoccurring ankle biters issues, but you have to identify them first, like we talked about on the last video, identify these issues, put them through this process. And again, the very best way you're ever going to know is go through your own ordering process for a product, be your own customer and, and see what that process looks like. If you get frustrated with it, well, you will definitely know that your customers are getting frustrated with it too. And then just fix those little problems and you'll be more, more adept to scale faster because of simple word of mouth. You know, it's like I used Amazon, for instance. Amazon gets my vote when it comes to customer service, customer support, returns, refunds, all those things. They get my vote because they do it right. They do a great job at that part of it, for sure. And there again, they go way above and beyond. And if you're a small company, you can't always afford to go you know, as far and above and beyond as someplace like Amazon can, but you can at least get the very basics right. Okay. So plug this little model in, you know, look through your business, figure out, okay, I'm having these issues. These are my, these are my main three or four problems that I need to fix. Let me run these through this very simple model and come up with new plans of actions that I can implement to fix these simple problems. And you'll be surprised at the end of the day, it probably won't even cost you anything because you'll already have the systems in place to do it anyway. You'll just have not taken that next step in that growth step to, to, to make those small changes. Okay, so plug some of that in if you uh, have those issues, those problems, have a model. There's, there's other models than this one you can use. This is just the one I prefer plug that in, it'll help you get through these issues going forward, which in turn, when you don't have these issues, it's far easier to scale your company. And then alongside, make your systems robust enough now to handle that scale going forward. Okay, there again, uh, I'll repeat what I've, I've said already many times. Our intent as a company should be to scale and to change the world by putting a good product, a good service uh, that our customer loves and they have all the customer support they need. We have happy customers and in turn, we're changing the world with a product or two that can affect uh, so many people going forward um, in your business and you make money, your customers are happy, they're satisfied with your product and now you can begin to grow and scale simultaneously your business and start hitting scaled numbers to the next level. So take that uh, little problem solving graph right there and input that into your business and see what kind of solutions you can come up with and implement them to make changes in your business to start your next scale.